1. What is a VM repository? A VM repository is essentially a storage location, could be on-premises or cloud-based, that holds. VM templates, pre-configured operating systems with specific software or settings. VM images, full OS snapshots that can be instantiated quickly. Since these repositories provide the source code of your virtual machines, any malicious or misconfigured template will replicate errors or malware across all future VMS created from it. 2. Malware Propagation If a VM template is infected with malware, every VM spun up from that template will also be infected. This can spread malicious software across multiple departments or even entire organizations if the repository is widely used. If the base image is bad, every resulting VM inherits the problem. 3. Security capabilities vary by vendor. Different virtual networking appliances, like virtual switches, have varying capabilities. Some virtual switches may not isolate traffic as effectively as physical switches. An attacker on one VM might sniff capture the network traffic of another VM on the same virtual switch if isolation is lacking. Even the choice of hypervisor or virtual switching solution matters. Don't assume all virtualization software is equally secure. 4. Bad repositories and how they happen. A compromised or bad repository can arise in two main ways. Malicious uploads. A hostile actor deliberately places infected templates or images into the repository. Unintentional misconfiguration. A well-meaning admin accidentally uploads a vulnerable image or misconfigured template. Once the repository is compromised, every new VM pulled from it is compromised too. 5. Protection and monitoring. Best practices to protect repositories include malware scans, regularly scan templates and images for viruses or spyware. Access controls, restrict who can upload or modify repository contents. Monitoring and AMP, logging, track changes to the repository to detect unauthorized modifications. Caution with cloud or shared repositories. A breach in a shared environment can affect multiple tenants. Monitoring the containers. We'll see how containers, both cloud storage containers and application containers, differ from traditional virtual machines and the security implications of each. 1. Cloud file storage containers, buckets or blobs. Cloud providers often refer to storage containers as buckets or blobs. A container is typically bound to a specific region. For example, in AWS, you might choose US East 1 and you cannot nest one container within another. Each container can host data objects, much like files in a normal file system, and these objects can carry metadata, key value attributes, to facilitate organization and management. These cloud-based containers offer agile provisioning, meaning you can quickly create or destroy them as needed. This agility is a double-edged sword. It's efficient, but can also lead to security oversights if you're spinning up new containers without proper configuration. 2. Application Container Virtualization versus Cloud File Storage Application Cell or Container Virtualization Docker, differs from the concept of storing data in buckets. Instead of focusing on file storage, application containerization focuses on isolating entire software environments at the OS level. Rather than using a hypervisor like VMware or Hyper-V, containers share the host OS kernel. This approach runs each container as an isolated cell, but all containers still rely on the same underlying OS. Security implication. If the underlying OS has a kernel level vulnerability, all containers running on that OS could be impacted. 4. OS Level Isolation Because containers rely on the native OS kernel, each container is allocated CPU and memory resources. Processes within containers are separate from processes in other containers, but they still run through the same OS. If isolation is misconfigured or a kernel exploit surfaces, multiple containers can be compromised at once. Think of containers as roommates living in the same house, OS. They each have their own rooms and personal items, resources. 5. Containerization for microservices and corporate workspaces. Containers support many modern architectures. Microservices, each container might run a small, specific service, an authentication service, or a payment processing service. Serverless architecture, in some cases, function-based computing is run in lightweight containers on demand. Mobile device workspaces, corporate applications can be packaged into separate containers, isolating them from the user's personal environment. This approach offers efficiency and portability, a Docker container can run on many different hosts with minimal reconfiguration. But misconfigurations at the OS or container level can lead to widespread vulnerabilities across these microservices or mobile workspaces.